G'day fellas, so today I'm gonna be showing you how I take a picture of our apparel. We got some new shirts, which to be able to sell them, we gotta take a picture of them so we can put the product on the website. This is probably one of the most DIY things you'll ever see from me because of how dodgy everything is. I've got a couple of cheap lights off eBay. They just give a really nice diffuse light to the shirt and to the person, which I'm about to grab them now. You can see how special they are. I think they cost about 60 bucks or something for both of them. Maybe 80 bucks for both. I hope they actually even still work because it's been a while since we put a product up. We're in the process of changing over to a bigger manufacturer. Dusty. Cowie's here and he's on, man. <laughs> is, that your new, is that your new rod? Oh yeah, this is my pinky. Pinky, pinky yeah. rod. Chicks love the pink rod. Cabby's the model. Obviously, we don't have money to pay a model, so we model most of the clothes. Cabby is actually oh, probably. It's just really annoying getting people to come as well. Oh yeah, even organising a mate or something, it's just a heckle. So this is the setup. A good light would probably look a lot better than this, but these, I mean, it's, it's made of the crappiest, cheapest material you can imagine, but it does the job. The reason you put this plastic shit over the top is it just spreads the light so instead of getting like a harsh shadow you can still get a shadow from it on your face but it's a softer kind of a light it doesn't give really psycho shadows I'm really the, really, really psycho, psycho shadows, shadows. <laughs> it's all about the model <laughs> it's all about the model eh? <laughs> like you can see now already cabbie's lit pretty nice you probably step forward a bit yeah, you can see there's no real skits, shadows on his face. We're gonna... Yeah. The shirt's pretty even. This one needs to be rotated down. Like that, a bit more. The thing that you always look for is that the shirt's lit properly. On my other camera, it's gonna expose it differently than this. I'm gonna make it skitsy exposure, but you pretty much just want it to be an even light across the whole thing. That's pretty good, except this is weird. What's that? This one. Pino eye. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I was hoping then. You're a bit frizzy. Black eye. You're a bit frizzy, man. Yeah, it's always goes frizzy. You got a black eye. Yeah. yeah. Alright, so that's pretty good. That's pretty much what we do. But then the last element of it is a white sheet. Which I have laying around. I think you can just hang it, it's Pretty professional in the old morning tide. <laughs> Studio. It gives me something to select, although white on white oh, is yeah. really bad. A green or something background might be a lot easier to select because you can select the colour. But because his shirt will be white, the background will be grey, I'll be able to add contrast to the image and select the background. This camera was my old camera and I've just given it to my daughter to use. It has 18 to 55 mil lens on it. The 50 mil that I took the lure shots with isn't great for these modeling shots just because I have to be so far away from the subject. I'm like, I'd, I'd have to be standing in the kitchen to be able to take a picture of Carvey over here and frame the shirt properly. When I change lenses, I try to do it really quickly because if you do it a lot, that's when dust will get inside. I'm going to show you what I'm recording on this and you're going to see what the lighting kind of looks like, how I'm exposing it. See how stiff the arm is? Yeah. In that photo. Can you see all that? How's the film yeah. going out? Yeah, it looks sick. Shot. Psycho. There it is, look at that. Okay, so when we do a good shot like that, we sometimes go, how did we get that? And right now we're going, how did we get that? What it is, is you are pretty much straight to camera. You're pulling your sleeve across with the other hand. If you can kind of recreate can that look up positioning. That? Yeah. A bit small or are we tough on the side here? Nah, it's tough. Okay. <laughs> we just go through and are checking that we've got a good shot. We took a lot of shots, but those ones are reeking. How good is that one? <laughs> they're, they're pretty bit dead heavy. creepy. That's pretty model-ish, model but... Yeah. 
like the hand and the, I like the hand in the pocket. That's actually psycho. My head, I look like a clown. It's pretty psycho. Getting serious, so. Looks like I got a really big forehead. forehead. Yeah, I know. No, I don't. No, I know. But. Big forehead. Oh, big forehead. Oh, that's kind of cool. I reckon that's really good. Not that one. Look at my eyeballs. You got the eyeballs going? Yeah. But that uh, one. Ooh. That one's alright. Yeah, so either that one. That's arm on. We got the arm that. shot. Alright. I like the sidewinder head, man. Yeah. Do you like the sidewinder head? Like, is that as in that? Uh... Yeah, when you're looking away. So I'm out. Hey. Alright. Hey. See you later, mate. Um, Big model. Yeah, anything else? Nothing. No. Okay, so the final stage is to put them on the computer. It goes into Photoshop's raw editor. Very first thing I do is I look through all the pictures. If the shirt's looking good, because it's the product, it's a product shot, it's not like a model shot of Cavi or something. But at the same time, if Cavi's looking real reeking in one of the pictures, that's not going to be very attractive to someone to want to buy that shirt. He has to look decent. It's a product, we're selling it, and you want it to look as good as you possibly can. So Cavi has to look good, and more importantly, the shirt has to look good. I'm triple checking that the shirt's not blown out. I'm triple checking that you can read the design, whatever it is, or see the design clearly. In this case, it's just the text. So obviously you don't want any of the letters folded over or obscured by some of the cloth or blown out. Like we don't want the white to just be 100% bright. We want it really bright because bright is clean and feels good and someone will see that and be attracted to it. And we don't want it to be like a dull, gray kind of picture like you want it to be super bright vibrant but not blown out it's a fair bit of work it takes me about an hour 45 minutes to an hour per image to do this so this is sped up a lot after i've chosen the images and they're exposed correctly i save them out and bring them into photoshop and at this stage this is where i select the background and get rid of it because we want these to be all about the product. We don't want some weird reeking sheet hanging on the wall in the background. It needs to be just a plain white psych. Obviously, if I had a good studio, I could just take a picture with a white psych, but I don't have that, so I have to cut out the background. This can come for free. If I had a black shirt, a lot of times I can get this selection really easily just by playing with the contrast and then... Uh, using the magic wand tool and selecting and, and a lot of the time it'll give me a good cutout of the background but with a white shirt I'm going to have to go in and I'm going to have to select around Cavi and around the shirt and make sure that I'm getting all of the background out of there it takes a bit of time but once you have that selection and once you have Cavi cut out you can really start working with the image and making it look a lot cooler cut, cut, cut select everything delete he's cut out and I can put whatever background I want. For this, I want a white background. All of our product shots are on white background. Just add in a layer, a white background layer, whack cavi over the top of it. And then here I do something a little bit special or tricky. What I do is I create a new layer that is a white, completely white, and I use the cutout of cavi and delete that from the white image. And then I duplicate it, so I have two of them. I blur them both differently. So one I do a wider blur on it and one I do a tighter blur on it. The, what this does is you can see it kind of feels like now he's backlit and I don't, I don't put these at 100% and just like make it look ridiculous. I just subtly do it so that it feels like there was a, a light from behind as well. After that, there's not that much else to do. I zoom in i make sure there's no weird like f massive pimple on cavi's head and if there is i might paint it out um i make sure there's no like dark weird creases in the shirt or any um fluff on the shirt showing you can't really see that on a white shirt but sometimes on a black shirt you might have this big bit of fluff on it that we didn't notice when we took the picture so i paint that out anything that's um, gonna subtract from the image and make the product look reeking I remove that I open an old product shot and I then paste this new one over the top of it 
and all I'm doing here is just getting the scale to be right so that it's coherent on the website. I want them all to kind of match and one not be massive and the other be small, you know what I mean? So I'm just scaling it to make sure it's the same size as most of the other images on the website. It's that that's finished. That's that product done. I, I go to Shopify and I create the product for it, add the images and press publish and it's done. That's how we take product shots. It's super dodgy. It's in the house, on the wall. There's no good studio. That lens that I was using there, the 18 to 55, that's a kit lens that came with that 600D. It's like the shittiest lens you can get. You don't need that beautiful, crazy depth of field. It can just be a pretty much flat image. You could dead set take a product shot on an iPhone as long as you've got good lighting. In this, the key point is those lights. They're the flimsiest, dodgiest, smelliest, plastic, toxic. They pretty much try and burn your house down every time you use them. But for the price, they're amazing. And without them, I would be struggling to take these pictures. If you want to take do-it-yourself product shots of apparel, I highly recommend getting those $80 eBay lights and learning how to cut something out in Photoshop. All right, guys, I hope you liked the video. Please share it with any of your mates who have clothing labels or want to start clothing labels and want to do it real cheap, be able to take a product shot without breaking the bank. Like and subscribe, leave me a comment, and I'll see you guys soon. Yeah.